Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Dreamtime Wisdom. Today we have a very special guest, parapsychologist Lloyd Auerbach. Lloyd is the author or co-author of nine paranormal books, one of which we'll be discussing today called Psychic Dreaming. Lloyd, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thanks, Tanya. So let's get started with a brief definition of what parapsychology is and how dreams fit into this framework. Sure. Parapsychology is the study of phenomena or what's called epiphenomena of consciousness, uh, including how information can come into us without the use of our normal senses or logical inference, how we can mentally or consciously affect matter and energy directly without the use of our physical body or, or devices. That's called psychokinesis. And then we also look at the idea that consciousness can extend past the brain and even survive the death of the body. Kind of that area is called survival of bodily death. So it's ESP, psychokinesis, and survival. And then how do, does dreaming fit into this, into parapsychology? Well, dreaming is, the dream state is one state in which people are psychic. That one, one state in which people receive information, uh, whether it's through ESP, and, and actually ESP is even involved if you had an experience with the deceased person. So uh, if you're having a visitation dream where it seems like someone who has passed away is appearing in your dream and conversing with you, that still involves ESP, but that's a separate consciousness that's kind of coming in to communicate with you. Right, because I know you talked about um, the Delaney method and other psychological methods for dream interpretation. Right. Um, so that's from the subconscious trying to understand what's going on, what your subconscious is trying to communicate with you, help you problem solve. But then there's also information that comes from outside of you, which is the psychic element. That's correct. And in reality, you know, the reason the dream state is such a good fertile ground for that is because during our waking state, our conscious minds prevent us from either recognizing the information as coming from outside, or it gets so, so well combined with our sensory input that we don't even notice it most of the time. Right. In the dream state, you know, all, all bets are off, essentially. Right, right. Now, our viewers are very interested in all aspects of dream work. Um, and you talked about some helpful tools like journaling and dream incubation. Can you talk a bit about that? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things here. First, when recognizing a psychic dream, one of the things that I've heard from people all over, uh, when I before I wrote the book, when I was interviewing people, when people would send me letters and surveys afterwards, how did they know it was a psychic dream? There's a couple of reasons, a couple of ways they know. One, it was a dream of the future, and it just happened to occur. And during that occurrence, they recognized that they had a dream about that. So obviously, they kind of track it back. But most of the time, there's something that is felt about that dream. It seems different, That's what, or it felt different. That's what I hear from people, or realer than real. So it kind of comes across with this uh, quality to it that separates us from our other dreams. The problem is that many of us don't remember our dreams or that we don't remember certainly all the dreams that we have throughout the night, unless we wake up. We tend to remember the ones from the dreaming period right before we wake up. So the two steps here, for psychic dreaming, uh, when you're talking about trying to connect with that aspect, one is remembering your dreams and learning how to do that. And part of that is either journaling or recording what you can remember when you first wake up or even in the middle of the night, because that reinforces the idea of recollection. And the other side of it is before you go to sleep, you do something called dream incubation. You basically tell yourself that you will remember your dreams and that you will have a psychic dream about X, Y, or Z, or you will connect with a relative or something like that. I have one more comment and then I'll let Catherine uh, uh, ask a few questions. So I know that you also said that when you were starting to research the book, that you started to actually re recall your dreams a little more strongly than before. Is that right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had not done any journaling. I still, to this day, I don't really do any journaling or keeping track of my dreams. I have too many other things, too many balls in the air, so to speak. But the entire time I was writing that book, from the time that I was asked to write it, and even starting to write the proposal for uh, the original publisher was Warner Books, um, till literally the night after I finished and turned in the manuscript, I was remembering more dreams than I ever remembered in my life and was having a few psychic dreams too. So it was pretty interesting because my intention and focus of attention on the subject. So it's all about intention. It's about intention and focus of attention. I mean, you put you put that attention 
to things that you have an intention about, and that reinforces the process. Love it. Thank you. Catherine. Um, just to touch a little bit on dream incubation for people that don't know what that means, because a lot of people don't know what that means. Um, and dream incubation is actually derived um, from ancient, uh, e like the Egyptians, as right. well as ancient Greece. And then how do you, within your book, um, tell people how to go about dream incubation? We'll just say modern day dream incubation. Well, and you know, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I have not really been able to track back the, the origin of this phrase, but you know, when you talk about having a decision, let's sleep on it. And that seems to relate <laughs> right here to this, mm -hmm. um, that dream incubation, which does go back to the ancient Egyptians. I mean, we do know that the ancient Mesopotamians did write, uh, yes. actually wrote quite a bit about dream interpretation. And the ancient Greeks had a book that actually was like a dream dictionary, essentially. But really, we point to the ancient Egyptians that learned to program themselves. So incubation is that, let's sleep on it. But what are you sleeping on? I mean, what are you going to dream about? You have to tell yourself that this is a question I need to, to answer. This is a subject I want to have a dream about. And the key, when I've read some books that talk about dream incubation, they're always missing the one piece, which is remind yourself to remember your dreams. Because the assumption is for a lot of those books that the people are already doing the journaling and keeping track of their dreams. So that's not always the case for people. So it really is a process of deciding what you want to dream about. In other words, whether it's a decision you need to have made or whether it is an action you want to play out. I mean, people talk about role playing in their dreams, such as I'm going to ask my, my boss for a raise tomorrow. What's the best way to do that? I want to dream about that. So you're basically telling your unconscious to provide you with that information. And if that information needs to come from the outside, that would be bringing in the psychic part of it. Right. And then for those out there, because a lot of people will say, well, you know what? I want to dream about X, Y, Z. We're doing this. And how come I'm not dreaming anything? Um, what would you, <laughs> what would your yeah. suggestion be? Because, well, you know, we're going to get a lot of that. <laughs> first, they are dreaming. Uh, you know, I, I talk to people all the time who say, I, have, I don't ever have dreams. Like, no, you don't remember your dreams. But the dream function, even though it's very controversial, even within, within neuroscience and psychology, uh, I mean, there's a, a wide spectrum that, A, we shouldn't remember our dreams because it's our brains basically getting rid of crap. It's kind of like a defragging your computer to make more room. That's the me very mechanistic perspective to clearly the dream work and the dream groups around the world and traditions of working with dreams goes back thousands of years and has a positive benefit. So I'm not quite sure why you have these materialists who are focused on getting rid of or not remember your dreams or ignoring all that evidence. I mean, that evidence is very clear. So really the issue is we do know from activity, um, studies of the brain and studies of sleep that that period where, which is called rapid eye movement, that our brains are active in a particular way. And if you wake someone up in that state, in these sleep labs or anywhere else, they will immediately know that they had a dream and be able to tell you about it. But if you don't ask them at that point, within a couple of minutes, it's gone. So the memories are fleeting. And if you wake up either at the wrong time or you don't focus on your dreams, you won't remember anything. So you may have had that dream about that you were incubating about. It also may take a little while. I mean, it's not like something that you can just sit down and do um, because you have to practice remembering your dreams. You have to kind of go through that. You could even probably tell yourself, hey, if I have this dream, if I have this dream in the middle of the night, I need to wake up to write it down. So give yourself that instruction as well. Right. And then is it also... Um or maybe this is something that you would advise or maybe not advise, the use of aromatics as well as mantras to be inclusive with dream incubation. Well, meditation, regardless of how you do it, might be useful. Uh, it doesn't suit everybody, certainly. Um, aromatics might help you trigger something. So if you incubate with a smell, you know, um, you're smelling spearmint or peppermint before you go to sleep, and you wake up and you smell spearmint or peppermint, that might trigger that. But it's not it's not a one size fits all situation for anybody, whether it's mantras, meditation of any kind, 
aromatics, could be a food. There's any number of things that could trigger for you. Is there anything else, Catherine? <laughs> Um, just for those out there, don't smell peppermint before going to sleep because it's going to keep you awake. <laughs> so I'm just very uplifting. <laughs> it's very uplifting. You'll be like, why can't I sleep? Maybe that's why you weren't receiving your now, information. Now, here's a one size fits all. I have smelled peppermint and it's, it's helped me go to sleep. Oh, really? See? <laughs> yeah. so, there you know, we go. Just, there's no one size fits all here at all. Right. You right. Know, we all have different body chemistry. Sure. Right. Uh, Lloyd, I had a quick qu uh, question too about the memory aspect. Um, I think you also mentioned that doing dream work can actually improve your memory over time. No question. Again, it's that putting that attention on the process itself. Uh, and that seems to be, I mean, that's the key for a lot of experiences that we have, including what we call psychic. I mean, one psychic I work with, a psychic and medium who we work with at a research organization in New York, which was my first job out of grad school. Um, always, when I asked him, how do you become more psychic? He says, first notice that you already are. Put attention to the experiences and that reinforces them. And it's exactly the same thing with dream recall. The more you work with your dreams, the more you focus on them, the more likely you are to remember more and more of them. And then just finally, I love uh, to close off with a personal story. So I know that you talked um, about having a, a lucid dream and where you were potentially out of body with a student, I believe. You visited yeah. a student and then they were they called you and said, why did you come to visit us? Yeah. So like that, that. <laughs> you know, one of the there's many different types of psychic functioning that happen in the dream state, one of which is the out of body experience. You know, people have dreams of traveling and on, on occasion, and we, we have on record in our field, a number of instances where when people were out of body in their dream state, they were seen by people where they traveled. So they visited somebody and they, they uh, typically were seen. So for me, um, this was actually while I was working at that research organization and working with that psychic and medium, uh, he kept on reinforcing my need to have an ex have multiple experiences, psychic experiences, to because I was studying this from a scientific perspective, I, I was missing personally, I didn't have any experiences that got me into the field. So it's not that I didn't believe in it, I certainly believed in this stuff, but this was helpful. So I had a dream, um, I was teaching adult ed courses at the time in the New York area, and uh, just parapsychology courses, and a couple of my students actually were psychics who were taking classes, and I got to be very friendly with one of them, uh, and her daughters as well. And I, I had uh, this dream. I woke up in the morning and I had this really loose, it was a lucid dream. I mean, kind of knew that I was dreaming, but it was incredibly realer than real, in which I was in her, in her bedroom with her, with her and her daughter, her, oldest, her youngest daughter was 18 at the time, watching television late at night. They were, they were typically very, very late night people, um, kind of fit in with some of my my own predilection for being a, a night person instead. So, and, and she, Danita didn't even normally go to sleep until she was, four, until it's like four in the morning. So they were up late watching movies. And they look in my dream, they looked up and they saw me and they started talking to me. It's like, what are you doing here? Why are you, you know, you're, are you dreaming? The dog was there. Apparently the dog recognized me the whole bit. Next morning, I just let it go. And actually it was a couple days later that I got a call um, from Danita saying, so were you ever going to call me? It's like, about what? And she said, you visited here while you were dreaming the other night. And she started describing the conversation, which is what I, I remembered, and even was able to, to um, say what I was wearing to bed that night, which is interesting. That's crazy. That's, that's really so cool. Odd. Yeah. So that's a great personal experience. So you got the scientific aspect and you definitely have the personal aspect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I've had, I've had some precognitive dreams here and there. And um, it's, it's been sometimes really interesting. Sometimes I forget them until the event actually starts to happen and then they come sure. rushing back. Sure. Yes. Well, thank you so much for all of the information. Um, where's the, what's the best website to find you at? Well, at the, at the moment, my website is actually down, oh, so it? <laughs> it's being reconstructed. Okay. Um, so probably the easiest way to find me is on Facebook at lloyd.auerbach.author and Lloyd is spelled with one L. Uh, so that's an easy place to find me. Um, I do some Facebook events that are there. I advertise those there. Or you can find me on Twitter at Prof Paranormal, as in Prof Professor Paranormal, or at Lloyd Auerbach, either way for that. Great. Thank you again. And uh, it's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you.
Thanks. Keep Thank dreaming, you. everybody. See you next Keep time. Keep dreaming. <laughs>